Good morning. Right, today we're at St Margaret's Church in a little um, village called Wellow in Hampshire. Well, I forgot where I was for a minute now. Yeah, it's a nice little uh, quiet village, very peaceful. It's first thing in the morning, usual bird song. Absolutely love these little churches in the villages. But yeah, the person we're here today to see is um, was an absolute angel during her lifetime. She served as a nurse in the Boer War. I mean, that's how far back we're going. Uh, she helped the British soldiers get over a lot of their injuries. And the person we're here to see is obviously Florence Nightingale. Right, Florence Nightingale was an absolute angel in human skin. She saved hundreds of lives. And if she wasn't able to save her lives, she'd sit with them, read to them out of the Bible. Absolutely amazing woman, devoted her life to it. But I shall show you around the uh, churchyard here. It's a lovely little village church. I shall show you that in a second. In fact, I'll turn me back onto it now. Typical little village church. We shall show you around the churchyard while I tell you a little bit about Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale was born on the 12th of May 1820 into a wealthy and well-connected British family at the Villa Columbia in Florence, Tuscany, Italy, and was named after the city of her birth. Florence's older sister, Frances Parthenope, had similarly been named after her place of birth, Parthenope, a Greek settlement now part of the city of Naples. The family moved back to England in 1821, with Nightingale being brought up in the family's home at Embley, Hampshire, and Leehurst, Derbyshire. A BBC documentary reported that Florence and her older sister, Parthenope, benefited from their father's advanced ideas about women's education. They studied history, mathematics, Italian, classical literature, and philosophy. And from an early age, Florence, who was the more academic of the two girls, displayed an extraordinary ability for collecting and analysing data which she would use to great effect in later life. Nightingale underwent the first of several experiences that she believed were caused from God in February 1837 while at Embley Park, prompting a strong desire to devote her life to the service of others. In her youth, she was respectful of her family's opposition to her working as a nurse only announcing her decision to enter the field in 1844. Despite the anger and distress of her mother and sister, she rejected the expected role for a woman of her status to become a wife and mother. Nightingale worked hard to educate herself in the art and science of nursing. In the face of opposition from her family and the restrictive social code for affluent young English women, as a young woman, Nightingale was described as attractive, slender and graceful. While her demeanour was often severe, she was said to be very charming and to possess a radiant smile. Her most persistent suitor was a politician and poet, Richard Monckton Milnes, but after a nine-year courtship, she rejected him, convinced that marriage would interfere with her ability to follow her calling of to nursing. In Rome in 1847 she met Sidney Herbert, a politician who had been Secretary at War from 1845 to 1846. He and Nightingale became lifelong close friends. Herbert would be Secretary of War again during the Crimean War, when he and his wife would be instrumental in facilitating Nightingale's nursing work in Crimea. She became Herbert's key advisor throughout his political career though she was accused by some of having hastened Herbert's death from Bright's disease in 1861 because of the pressure her program of reform placed on him. Nightingale also much later had strong relations with academic Benjamin Jowett, who may have wanted to marry her. On 22nd of August 1853, Nightingale took the post of superintendent at the Institute for the Care of Sick Gentlewomen in Upper Harley Street, London a position she held until October 1854. Her father had given her an annual income of £500, roughly £40,000 in present terms. 
which allowed her to live comfortably and to pursue her career. Florence Nightingale's most famous contribution came during the Crimean War, which became her central focus when reports go back to Britain about the horrific conditions for the wounded at the military hospital on the Asiatic side of the Bosporus opposite Constantinople at Scutari, modern-day Uskador, in Istanbul. Britain and France entered the war against Russia on the side of the Ottoman Empire. On the 21st of October 1854, she and the staff of 38 women volunteer nurses, including her head nurse Eliza Roberts and her aunt May Smith, and 15 Catholic nuns, mobilised by Henry Edward Manning, were sent under the authorisation of Sidney Herbert to the Ottoman Empire. On the way, Nightingale was assisted in Paris by her friend Mary Clark. The volunteer nurses worked about 295 nautical miles away from the main British camp across the Black Sea at Balaclava in the Crimea. Nightingale arrived at Sel Selimea Barracks in Scutari early in November 1854. Her team found that poor care for wounded soldiers was being delivered by overworked medical staff in the face of official indifference. Medicines were in short supply, hygiene was being neglected and mass infections were common, many of them fatal. There was no equipment to process food for the patients. After Nightingale sent a plea to the Times for a government solution to the poor conditions of the facilities, the British government commissioned Isambard Kingdom Brunel to design a prefabricated hospital that could be built in England and shipped to the Dardanelles, or Dardanelles, should I say. The result was Renkoy Hospital, a civilian facility that under the management of Edmund Alexander Parks had a death rate less than one-tenth of that of Scutari. Stephen Paget, in the Dictionary of National Biography, asserted that Nightingale reduced the death rate from 42% to 2%, either by making improvements in hygiene herself or by calling for the Sanitary Commission. For example, Nightingale implemented hand washing in the hospital where she worked. During her first winter in Scutari, 4,077 soldiers died there. Ten times more soldiers died from illnesses such as typhus, typhoid, cholera and dysentery than from battle wounds. With overcrowding, defective sewers and lack of ventilation, the Sanitary Commission had to be sent out by the British government to Scutari in March 1855, almost six months after Nightingale had arrived. The Commission flushed out the sewers and improved ventilation. Death rates were sharply reduced but she never claimed credit for helping to reduce the death rate. Head nurse Eliza Roberts nursed Nightingale through her critical illness of May 1855. Nightingale still believed that the death rates were due to poor nutrition, lack of supplies, stale air and overworking of the soldiers. After she returned to Britain and began collecting evidence before the Royal Commission on the Health of the Army, she came to believe that most of the soldiers at the hospital were killed by poor living conditions. This experience influenced her later career when she advocated sanitary living conditions as, a great, as of great importance. Consequently, she reduced peacetime, peacetime deaths in the army and turned her attention to the sanitary design of hospitals and the introduction of sanitation in working class homes. The arrival of two waves of Irish nuns, the Sisters of Mercy, to assist with nursing duties at Scutari met with different responses from Nightingale. Mary Claire Moore headed the first wave and placed herself and her sisters under the authority of Nightingale. The two were to remain friends for the rest of their lives. The second wave, headed by Mary Frances Bridgman, met with a cooler reception as Bridgman refused to give up her authority over her sisters to Nightingale, while at the same time not trusting Nightingale, whom she regarded as ambitious. During the Crimean War, Nightingale gained the nickname The Lady with the Lamp from a phrase in a, reported, a report in the Times. She is a ministering angel without any exaggeration in these hospitals, and as her slender form glides quietly along each corridor, every poor fellow's face softens with gratitude at the sight of her. When all the medical officers have retired for the night and the silence and darkness have settled down upon those miles of prostrate sickness, she may be observed alone with a little lamp in her hand making her solitary rounds. 
Florence Nightingale died peacefully in her sleep in a room at 10 South Street, Mayfair, London, on the 13th of August 1910, at the age of 90. The offer of burial in Westminster Abbey was declined by her relatives, and she is buried in the churchyard of St Margaret's Church in East Wellow, Hampshire, near Embley Park, with a memorial with just her initials and dates of birth and death. She left a large body of work, including several hundred notes that were previously unpublished. A memorial monument to Nightingale was created in Carrara Marble by Francis William Sargent in 1913 and placed in the cloister of the Biscilla of Santa Croce in Florence, Italy. Right, Florence Nightingale's uh, headstone, I can actually see it now, but it's not really a headstone, it's more of a monument. And from what I remember, she's only got her initials put on it. Her family are on there and their whole names are on there, but it's only her initials. But one thing I've just noticed as I walk past it, and I'll spin you around and show you, is a bench right on the side of the church here. So let's spin you around and show you that first. There you go. Look at this. This seat commemorates the bicentenary of Florence Nightingale on the 12th of May 2020. It was funded by kind donations from Rosemary Jones, Wellow Parish Council and the Royal County Hospital Nurses League. But as you can see, it clearly says on the top, Florence Nightingale, for merit. That's an absolutely beautiful bench. Yeah, lovely bench. But this um, grave marker, I'll spin you around in a second because I can see it from here and you can't miss it you just cannot miss this one right let's go and have a look at her headstone now tell me when you can see it all right as i said it's only got her initials on it for some bizarre reason which i do not understand But I'm not going to leave a, um, a river, river polished um, pebble on this one. So I'm not sure whether you can actually leave stuff on this. But this is a statement. This is definitely a statement. Right, let's have a look at the names on it. Right, first one here. William Edward Nightingale of Embley in this county and Lee Hurst, Derbyshire, died January the 5th, 1874, in his 80th year, and in thy light shall we see light. <clears throat> right. Devoted to the memory of our mother, Frances Nightingale, wife of William Edward Nightingale, Esquire, Died February the 1st, 1880. God is love. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. All right, who have we got around this side? In memory of Francis Parthenope, elder daughter of William Edward and Francis Nightingale, and second wife of the Right Honourable Sir Harry Varney, or Verney, B.T. of Claydon House, Buckinghamshire, born at Naples, April 19th, 1819, died at Claydon, May the 12th, 1890, buried at Middle Claydon. O all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. And finally, last but certainly not least, this is the one we've come to see, and it's got the least amount of writing on it. FN, obviously Florence Nightingale. Born 12th of May, 1820, died the 13th of August, 1910. But that is the final resting place of Florence Nightingale. Well, that was certainly a statement. Right, well, anyway, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up, same as usual. It really, really does help the channel grow. And um, if you like the content, then please maybe consider subscribing, if you haven't already. 
and uh, if you do subscribe then don't forget to hit that notification bell that way you'll be notified every time i upload a new video and uh, please don't forget if there's anyone else you'd like me to go and see no matter where they are then uh or obviously within reason then uh please let me know in the comments but that is it from st margaret's church in wellow in hampshire i'll see you all again on the next one wherever i am so until then bye bye for now